Welcome back guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you what your first motorized bike kit should be and why. We're going to be looking at some different websites today. I'm going to show you what to stay away from and what to go for. We're going to be looking at different gas bike frames, mountain bike frames, you name it. So stay tuned to the end of the video, it's going to be a good one. Okay, so the first website we're going to be looking at is Amazon.ca. And there's a lot of engines on this website, it's where I buy all my engines from just because of where I live in Canada. Um, I'm gonna be showing you some different kits that I look at, and this is actually the one I bought for my Yamaha. It's a Neom brand, and is a very high quality engine. It comes with a G4 cylinder, eight millimeter mounting studs, along with Allen bolt hardware, along with just some really nice upgrades. Has a Bofang style carburetor, has a four bolt tensioner, the list goes on and on. To put it simple, this engine is really high quality, and is known for reliability because I've had no issues with it. Mine is the black model, which is the exact engine you see here. I did do porting and polishing to mine, but I'm not going to get into that. There's an upgraded version. It comes with a VM18 style carburetor, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it still has a stock exhaust, so I wouldn't recommend that. Um, you can see here there is a 50cc kit. Um, actually, no, it's a 110. And I don't like the 110 because it comes with a iron sleeve cylinder, which is supposed to last longer, but along with the terrible port timing and the rough port edges, I would not recommend this kit as your first kit to buy. If you're experienced, I would say go for it, but it's definitely a junk engine if you're just trying to take it out of the box and ride it. The carburetor is really defective from what I've seen. And I would not recommend this at all. You can tell by these pictures, they didn't even put a lot of effort into trying to, you know, convince you to buy it. They just kind of photoshopped an image there. So, moving on to the next kit, now we're going to look at the 50cc. Now, you can see this 50cc kit is not really recommended for anybody that actually wants to go fast. Um, if you're trying to stay under that 20 mile an hour limit, I guess you could go for it. Or you're a younger rider. But, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be going too slow. The kit itself is quite good quality, has a 40 millimeter intake along with six mil studs, so it's not even the eight millimeter, and it has the smaller piston, along with decent engine hardware. So now we're gonna look at the 100 cc. Um, this is for marketing. It's actually a 49 millimeter big bore kit engine, has a CDH power head, and it's a pretty decent kit. Um, I would definitely recommend it as one of their first kits. It gives you a lot of boost and power going up hills and things like that, and you won't have to tinker with the engine as much to, you know, get more speed out of it. So I would definitely go with that kit. Now we're going to be looking at Bikeberry. Now Bikeberry I've never bought from, but I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard really good things, and I've heard really bad things. They generally sell a lot of bullet trains, which I do own a bullet train. Not, you know, sourced from them. It was sourced from Amazon. But they do carry some high quality engines opposed to what they used to supply. And you can see they have their stage one, two, three, and four kits along with some mega motors. Um, we're just going to be sticking to the bullet trains at first. So you can see this is the BT80 electric start version. And you can see right here that a lot of new builders are going to be, you know, attracted to this engine because they're going to go, oh, it's an electric start and it looks high quality. But there's a lot going on here with the wiring, and I would not recommend it if you're not, you know, mechanically inclined and you just kind of want to bolt it on and go. This is going to take a lot more to get going and isn't going to be as easy an install as a generic China doll. You can see there has kind of a clutch tool, a lot of different hardware. The hardware is high quality, but once again, a lot of parts going on here. I would not recommend this kit, but it's a very high quality engine to say the least. Moving on, we have the... I believe BT100, it is the big bore version of the BT80 without the electric start. This is strictly a higher performance engine. It comes with a 32 millimeter intake, so not as big as a 40, but it compensates with a bigger piston. Again, this kit doesn't really have a lot going on. Standard wiring, the same as the China doll, but there is some issues with cooling with the head due to the fact that the cylinder head is not that big. So this one is kind of another one you need more experience. But if you have that experience, this will be really good for a first kit. And it comes with exceptional hardware, high quality exhaust, even comes with an install guide. Um, it's $250 American, so that translates to probably $350 in Canadian money. And you can see here we also have the PK80, 
um, again, marketed as the 66 slash 80. This is a kit that I would definitely recommend buying. It comes with 8mm hardware for the mounting. It comes with Allen bolts. You can get it in black or silver. It has high quality CDI components along with a G4 cylinder with the open transfers. And it's just a really high quality engine opposed to some others I've seen. It shows you all the upgrades it has and there's a list there. It comes with a three prong spark plug. I did a video on this. They're not really known for being better. Again, those eight millimeter studs, the bigger intake, you can see there the better hardware, the copper head gasket seals better so you won't get any leaks, and of course the higher quality CDI. And you can see it has the G4 cylinder, just better for performance overall, and it's going to be really good for a first builder. Okay, so now we're going to move on. You can just quickly see here the stage one, two. Um, again, I would not recommend those if you want to go for performance. I recommend the stage four. Again, it's not going to be a crazy fast engine, but the stage four is known to be a pretty good beginner's engine. And you can see here the Mega Motors, I would not recommend. Has cheaper hardware and is an older style of an engine. It doesn't have the new cylinder on it, obviously. And it's just BikeBerry's old kind of stock engine. They're trying to get rid of them. So you can definitely tell this kit is a lot lower quality. And it comes in the two different color options. You can see it has Phillips hardware. Has a lesser quality exhaust. Probably a 410 chain opposed to the 415. Moving on to BicycleEngines.com. Again, a site that I really want to buy from due to the fact it's very well organized and has a lot of aftermarket. You can see here they have some preview engines, the Z100, the Silver Slant, which is a PK80. And we're going to actually go ahead and look at the engine kits. Now, this is the one that everybody's been talking about recently. It's the ZT Moto Phantom 85. And this is basically a chainsaw cylinder, guys, on a motorized bike bottom end. Now, you guys may be asking, is this any good? Well, there was actually a lot of things that went on with this engine. This is the Gen 3. Their first two generations had bushings in the wrist pin, and they were actually known to blow up. So, I don't recommend this as your first engine. Way too much power for a Walmart bike if you're going to go that route. And you can see there, they went ahead and put the new wrist pin. Again, I'm not saying it's a bad engine. It is a, I'm sure it's a ripper. But, you know, with the issues it's had and the fact that its reliability probably isn't the best with all the power. Um, you can see it has a high quality OZ reed along with a high quality gasket and that Bofang carburetor. It's a little under carbureted for the true 85cc rating, but you can't go wrong. So now we're going to be looking at the Zeta 80. It is the dual spark plug engine. And again, another thing that attracts new builders, but I'm going to be honest with you guys, it is still the cheap Chinese Z4C spark plugs along with a single unit CDI. So I highly doubt this actually makes it you know, any better in the combustion cycle. Again, this engine is not bad. It comes with the Bofang carburetor. It comes with the 8mm mounting studs. It has the new square ports on the G4 cylinder. And one thing I noticed about bicycle engines, they don't really show the kit themselves. They just kind of show what the engine's got. They don't show, you know, if it has a 4-bolt tensioner, what sprocket it's running. And we're going to go ahead and look at some more engines here. Now, they do have the Dio Reed. Basically, it is a screw to read on a vertical cylinder, and basically that just means higher performance. Now, this carburetor is a lot more to tune, and it's the OKO style. I would not recommend this kit as your first kit, but if you're already into this hobby and looking to buy one, I totally recommend it. It comes with the higher quality cylinder. You can see that kit right there. I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and it just shows you the Dio read. It is similar to the G2 read, the way it comes out to the side but is a little bit larger in diameter. You can see that factory windowed piston along with a, it comes with a air filter and a velocity stack. So, I mean, it is a good performance engine to start off on. Um, but yeah, really good engine. So now we're going to be looking at the Zeta 100. Now, this is referred also as the YD 100. This came out probably three or four years ago, um, the engine itself. Now, the Dia Reed version, I don't, I don't know how long it's been out. But again, another engine, you need more experience. The YD100 itself, you know, the 50 millimeter bore engine, you can get away with it as a stock kit to run it as your first bike. But if you're going to, you know, buy this engine as a first time builder, the carburetor might be a little hard to tune. 
So that's kind of the overview on BicycleEngine.com. Now one more engine I want to check out before we log off is the Z80 Firestorm. You can see that it has that cylinder. Compared to the old one, the closed transfers, not as much airflow is going to get into there and, you know, produce as much power. Generally, the G4 engines make closer to 2.5 horsepower. The standard China doll only makes 1.9. So you can definitely tell this engine had a lot of thought put into it. And yeah, definitely recommend it. So if you haven't caught on by now, you're going to notice these engines aren't the most reliable. So what I'm going to go ahead and show you is some different parts on Amazon. And again, I know Amazon, Bike Bear, you can get them from any place. I'm just going to be showing you some of the parts that I think are decent. Now, the hub adapter sprocket is ideal for cruiser bikes for many reasons. It fits right onto the hub. It doesn't tug in your spokes like a rag joint does. This one is a 40 tooth sprocket, so it's going to allow for really good top speed, but still have torque. And you can see it's CNC machined, which just makes it very high quality. You can see it has a three bolt design and a little spacers there to really offset it the right way. And yeah, there's other types out there. Um, you can see here that it's actually showing you can buy the spring tensioner along with the carb. You don't have to do that. That's just an option. And you can see down here we have the spring tensioner I was talking about. This is kind of bad because it's known to cause chain lockups and, you know, just ruin your engine case. So I don't recommend it as your first chain tensioner option if your stock one is bad or doesn't fit. I recommend trying to get your stock one to work first before you move to this. But if this is your only option, it does work and it does tension your chain automatically. And now we're going to look at something that I wouldn't recommend totally just because of the fact that it's a waste of money. This carburetor here, I've done plenty of videos on, and I have one myself, and I don't care what jets you put in it, it will never work as good as the stock NT. And the stock NT is the one that comes with your kit, and it just works. Like, it just, you tune it, and then it just stays tuned. This one here is known to have an auto choke, and it has the idle adjuster there. I think it's actually an air fuel screw, and then it has a flat slide, which is why everybody goes for it, because it's a flat slide carburetor. Which I guess allows more airflow, but honestly, I don't think it does. And your fuel port right there, you know, is on the side of the opposite of the stock one. So that's kind of weird, especially if you have to get more gas line. So now you're going to be looking at the MZ65 clone pipe. I personally do own two of these, and I gotta say, they're a really good pipe. If you just want like one or two more horsepower on your engine, along with a reed in this, will get you there. You can see that this one is powder coated black. But you can also get a silver one or a chrome one. It really depends what seller you're looking at. Now, I ordered the chrome one, quote-unquote. I know it looks kind of dull in the picture, but when you get it, it's a beautiful chrome. And it just looks really nice on a, you know, a black hypercruiser frame. So I definitely recommend the chrome one. But if you're going for that blacked-out look, the black is always an option. And yeah. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at pull starters. Now, there's only two main options for pull starters. There's one that's more CNC machined on the inside, and this one's kind of cast metal. You can see there at the handle, that rope that's tied there generally likes to rip out when you pull it, you know, on the bike. So I don't, I don't recommend, you know, this specific one. And you're going to need wide pedal cranks, because think about it, guys. Your magneto is so close to your pedal already, with it sticking out that much, you know, it's not going to help pedal clearance, and you won't be able to pedal your bike anymore. And it just kind of, you know, it's not really good high quality. Now, there's another thing that I personally bought this kit, and I think it's worth it, the gasket kit. If you're looking for spare parts, this is definitely a great option because it allows you to have every single gasket in case you rip one. It comes with a low-hole piston. I don't know why it shows a 50cc one in the picture, but it's supposed to come with a normal one. And then it has piston rings to go along with it, and then it has a wrist pin bearing and all that, along with clutch pads, which these are the higher quality ones, so you know they're going to last. So I definitely recommend this. Because, you know, you always want that extra set of gaskets. Um, it sucks when you, you don't have the gasket material to fix it. Now, here's one thing I just did a video on, and you guys loved it. It was the reed valve setup. Now, the reed valve setup is awesome, but you do need to window your piston, which I'll show pictures of later. But you can see how it connects. It has, like, four bolts, and then it has two um, reed flaps in the inside that open and close. It has all Allen bolt hardware and is a really good option for the performance guys on the cheap. It's about $30 on Amazon, like I said in other videos, and the intakes have definitely improved. That one is welded, but now they came out with a solid aluminum one, 
which isn't going to have as many air leaks. So now I'm just going to go ahead and type in the windowed piston. Now I did make one myself with a Dremel. I went ahead and took a drill bit, drilled in the middle of the piston, and widened it to make my window. But you can buy them if you don't have those tools necessary. So this one is kind of a crazy, ridiculous price of $50 with shipping. Um, again, that's with COVID going on and the fact that CDH Power is known for overpricing. But this is your standard 66cc piston with the window and G-clips and everything. And I'm not saying this kit is bad, but you can definitely find better deals like I'll show in a second here. But you can see, like I said, it comes with the piston rings and everything. And you can get, like I said, pre-made ones. There's a bigger window there, as you can see, but this kit I really like. It comes in at $23, and you can see it comes with a head gasket. It comes with a base gasket, two piston rings, a standard windowed piston, and I believe all these windowed pistons are high holes, so if you guys have a low hole engine, it won't work. Moving on to Bikeberry, again, they have quite a you know part selection, I would say, and you can see here they have fuel lines, spark plugs, piston rings, but one thing that really caught my eye was the mag wheels. I've heard many bad things about this mag wheel set, not specifically this one, but mag wheels in general, just because of the fact that they're cast aluminum and they're known for cracking off off-road. So if you're driving off-road in the trails or anything like that and you hit a hard bump, these things might crack. Along with the disc brake bolts and the sprocket bolts are connected, um, those are known to rip out. So even though the bearings might be better quality and the rims might be thicker, the fact that the sprocket bolts are really thin makes it, you know, a tough buy for most people. Another thing I see is the dual brake lever. This is really good for beginners because it really cleans up your build and doesn't have as many cables. Moving on to frame setups, you can see the Switz Cruise bike is really popular on Bikeberry, but basically it's just a Hyper repainted as white and rebranded as a Switz Cruise. Um, this setup is really well known for being durable, but you can get it cheaper elsewhere, so keep that in mind. But if you want to get it directly from Bikeberry, that's your thing. The Switz Cruise is definitely a great option. It comes with 26-inch wheels, comes in many different colors, and, you know, overall, once you bolt an engine on it, the only thing I would say about this bike, and I have one personally, is the rear fender, you know, can get in the way of your chain line, so you'll have to cut out a spot for your drive chain. But besides that, it's a really solid build. Um, there's some gas bike frames here. This is not the felt faker design. This is the standard gas bike frame. Not super sturdy, but it does have the built-in tank along with the built-in sprocket and everything. So if you just want a frame that's going to be as easy to build as possible, this will be the one to choose. It has that chain adjustments along with the little 10 millimeter nuts that allow you to pull the wheel back easier. It has the disc brakes and the front suspension. The front suspension on, the, on these bikes aren't known to be the best, but it's better than being a rigid fork, eh? So now we're going to look at a felt, I believe it's a felt faker frame, and it's called the F-Zero. Now the F-Zero you may have seen in other YouTube videos on, you know, other channels. But it is a sturdier version of what we just talked about. It has a thicker aluminum frame with bigger welds. It has high quality Maxxis hookworm tires, along with a cooler banana seat and lower bars. Now one thing that I definitely heard about this bike is the seat is very uncomfortable. And the front sprocket is actually too big. So when you mount your engine onto the frame, it kind of hits your clutch cover. And then you're basically screwed after that. You got to change out your chain ring. As you can see there, I think it's like a 42 tooth or something like that. It's, it's quite large for a motorized bike. So I would definitely either change that out or find another option. It does have really good disc brakes. I believe they're 180 millimeter disc. And it's a really solid frame. But for the price, it's definitely on the higher end. I would not consider it. Here's the exact bike that I own. It is a 2021 Hyper Beach Cruiser, and I, this is my number one pick. If you guys want to go with the Firestorm 80 and this bike, you will have a reliable bike that will last for years. It has 26-inch rims with aluminum wheels and a steel frame. Best of both worlds, in my opinion. You get the strong aluminum wheels and the flexible steel frame that will allow for vibrations to pass through it. And the fenders on this bike, like I said, are a little bit sketchy, and it does come with a coaster brake which is plenty of stopping power. Here's another option if you want to go the cheap route. This frame usually goes for around $100, I believe. Now it's probably $120 with the COVID and everything. But you can see here it's a Roadmaster Granite Peak. And this frame is known to be really durable for an engine. It's a little tight, so if you do have a YD100 where the spark plug is forced to stick out the front, it might not work as easily as you might think. 
but for any standard PKAD engine or a you know two-piece cylinder design it's gonna work awesome it has a front suspension and a steel frame along with some gears to make it easier to pedal so guys I hope this guide helps you on purchasing your first motorized bicycle kit here's some of my builds if you like to take a look at them for you new viewers out there but I've definitely built quite a bit of these bikes so you can take my word for it on what kits are good or not I hope you guys enjoyed the video Make sure to drop a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next video in peace, and have a wonderful day as always.